Hi and welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual UK and American citizen. And today we are talking about the differences between UK and US butter. After my last video, which was all about potatoes, which you should check out if you haven't already, um, I realized that you all are weird like me and love digging into very specific, strange topics until you're sitting there like, did I just watch a video about potatoes? Yes, I did. Did I enjoy it? Yes, I did. I have watched hours of YouTube videos about cruises, for instance. Have I been on a cruise? No. Am I going on a cruise anytime soon? No, I don't know how it happens. So um, we're gonna talk about butter because US and UK butter are actually different. Okay, so difference number one has to do with the packaging of butter. Butter in the UK, and I mean real butter, not spreadable butter, we will get to that in a little bit. Um, butter is sold in block packaging, typically in the UK. You'll usually get, it's kind of like short and fat rectangle, maybe sometimes square-ish, but it's not like a long block. In the US, on the other hand, butter is often sold and packaged as sticks that then come in a cardboard box that look like this. Each stick, this long stick of butter in the US has markings on it showing you how much a tablespoon of butter is. So you simply slice it off and you don't have to do any measuring. There are typically eight tablespoons in each US stick of butter, which is one half a cup of butter. Now, I know my British viewers are having an absolute meltdown right now because you're like, that is the least accurate thing ever. And also, what is a cup? And don't you weigh your butter in grams in a recipe? And the answer is uh, nope. Most American recipes will not weigh ingredients in grams and many Americans don't even own a kitchen scale. Our butter comes with built-in measurements, uh, which is either weird or genius, depending on, I guess, which side of the pond that you're on. Difference number two is what is actually within those sticks or blocks of butter, because I have to admit that I did think butter was butter before researching this video because I'm not a very good cook, as I've confessed. So when I looked up American versus UK butter, I thought Google was going to laugh at me, but it did not. Instead, it helped explain that American butter and British butter are actually different. So let's start with the basics, which is the butter fat percentage. USDA requires American butter to be at least 80% butter fat, so most will be 80% butter fat. Now, British butter specifically is also set at 80% butter fat to be considered butter, which I've seen across various uh, UK owned brands like at Asda or Tesco, but European butter takes it a step further and is a higher percentage of butter fat, starting at around 82% or 83%, and there are many uh, European style butters sold in UK stores like Kerrygold, which is 82% butter fat, and Anchor, which is 82.9% butter fat. You can buy Kerrygold within the US, but most Americans will just stick to a basic stick butter. And American brands like Land O'Lakes, um, unless they're a really good cook and understand the differences in butter. Now, why the difference in percentage requirements? Why do Americans not want their butter to be higher in butter fat percentage? The answer comes down to culture and convenience. The North American industry is focused on quantity over quality. And as someone mentioned in a Quora comment, the North American industry is geared towards turning vast volumes of products in the shortest time possible. Although these plants are state of the art and produce billions of dollars, slash pounds, the measurement pounds, of very safe products, aging of cheeses and cream is not their schedule. From experience, I would also say that when it comes to quality of food, and I'm not talking about food safety here because that's another topic entirely, but when it comes down to quality, as a culture, um, more Brits and Europeans tend to be more foodie centric, whereas Americans aren't as much. We don't, as a culture, sit around for a long time eating and savoring our meals like they do in parts of Europe. And we do typically view food as a society as something that is meant to be enjoyed, but we're not that concerned with whether an extra couple percentages of butterfat will make our butter taste better when it seems good enough as it is. And you can disagree with that as a matter of your own personal values and love for butter, but the point of these videos for me is to try and add some context and nuance to the cultural differences 
between the two, even when we're talking about butter, because often the reason for some of them is not just black and white, and involves a lot of different areas of understanding of how a culture operates and what the people in that culture value. Anyways, moving on, both countries do have salted and unsalted butter options. Now, when it comes to the color of butter, European and most UK butter is going to be a brighter yellow than American butter, which is a very, very, very pale yellow, almost could pass for white. This is down to the diet of the cows. So the standard in the US is grain fed cows, whereas in Europe, it's grass fed. In grass, there are natural carotenes that get passed into the milk and thus the butter, which make it appear more yellow, which isn't present in grain-fed cows. Butter in the UK is also often churned longer than American butter, which gives it a softer texture. Let's go to difference number three, even though I think we've done like 10 differences already, and that is the taste of butter in the UK versus American butter. Because of everything we've gone over so far, American butter has a much more mild flavor than British butter, which is richer and creamier. In America, the European butter brands are sold at a premium for those that want that extra flavor, which is why most American recipes will just use standard American butter, as many families won't have the means or desire to be buying expensive butter all the time and realistically don't care, as I mentioned before. Difference number four, this was mentioned in another video, but in case you've forgotten or haven't seen that video, Americans typically don't use butter as a spread on sandwiches like they do in the UK. This may make more sense to you now, because I know there are a lot of people in the comments of that video who were very um, taken aback by this, but this might make more sense to you now, having learned that American butter um, doesn't spread as easily and is less flavorful than British butter. So why would we use it on our sandwiches when we can use other things and leave the butter for baking or putting into our cooking? Now I do want to cover spreadable butter as well. Spreadable butter is typically not really butter. It's usually vegetable oils either blended with buttermilk or with butter. Um, in the US, they often combine vegetable oils and buttermilk, and in the UK, it's usually vegetable oils added to butter to make the butter spreadable, but you can find spreadable butter or margarine in both countries. Lastly, and this applies to many things when comparing the UK to the US, but I just have to mention when it comes to spreadable butter, the sheer amount that you can buy at one time in the US is amazing and speaks to our larger fridge sizes. For instance, my dad used to buy one of America's favorite spreadable butter brands, Country Crock, in a 45 ounce container. If you're not familiar with that in grams, it's about 1,275 grams. I'm not sure if this picture is the 45 ounce one or not, but just look at how big this tub of spreadable butter is compared to the potato in the picture. Honestly, when it comes to butter or when it comes to most things, Americans like things in bulk. You can't really deny that. So there you go. Now you're fully in the know about some of the differences between British and American butter. And I hope you've learned something from this video and are not too mad at me because you probably now crave butter on like a warm piece of bread right about now. Comment below with your own thoughts or experience you'd like to add on this very important subject. And if you have reached the end of the video and you aren't subscribed, it would mean a lot to me if you do subscribe or comment to let me know that you're watching. That's it for this video, so I'll see you next time.